up, gamers? Your boy Beast Gamer Kuma here with the First Descendant Season One Invasion Update Preview. Now, I've been playing First Descendant religiously for the past couple of weeks, and I want to see what's going on with this new update. So I'm gonna put on my headphones. I'm gonna sit here and react to what's going on. Stay tuned. Stay with me, and let's see what's up. Previously on the First Descendant. Good question. Do you truly plan on inverting the Ironheart data? Kickoff will engulf Ingrid. The roars of the Valkyrs will fill this land with fear. The Ironheart has been destroyed. Ooh. And no one can alter the balance of Ingrid. Turn the ship around. We are putting back. We managed to fend off our enemy's large scale attack, but the war is far from over. Oh, the still good, honey, I still see. threatens us, and our enemies are plotting new strategies. Can Ingress ever find true peace? Has I don't know. really given up on the war? Invasion After episode Kuril's one. The fleet disappeared. The Vogus began moving from deep within the dungeon to raid the ancestors' facilities in Ingress and That's reclaim rude. the outpost. Detecting this, Ingress immediately dispatched a scout. That scout's name is Haley. Oh, hey, Haley. Haley. Who rose from a supply soldier in the guerrilla unit to a legendary sniper is now a newcomer in the Descendant Corps. Okay. Ruthlessly eliminating enemies with her anti material sniper rifle. She dominates battles with her ability to drop her body temperature and emit cold air. Another when freeze descendant. Nice. When okay, that's not bad. Distance, her weapon's critical hit multiplier increases, making her an excellent fit for sniper rifles. She possesses sub zero bullets oh, snap. that fire multiple shots in an instant and a storm snare that pushes back shoulder cannon like a mini shoulder cannon in front. Above all, Haley's specialty is switching to her anti material sniper rifle and firing a single incredibly powerful shot oh. stronger than any other attack. In season one, the Vulgus launches a new strategy the invasion. Invasions occur randomly in two dungeons of the hard difficulty infiltration operations. So now we got dungeons now. Oh, choose yeah. to enter between the existing operations or the invasions. Invasion dungeons are only available for solo play, testing the strength of the descendants. Three Vulgus legions will block the descendants with different defense mechanisms. The quantum field creates an immortal state impervious to physical attacks. The resonant shatterers cause massive explosions with the energies of RK and the Iron Heart. The Keeper Tile encryption device maintains a powerful security system. Invasion dungeons present new mechanics that disrupt the Descendants' operations. Solve these enemies' mechanisms and swiftly eliminate them. Invasion dungeons are designed for speed runs, and the faster you clear them, the greater the rewards that await. After coming in contact with the Iron Heart, Descendants experience an RK resonance phenomenon. This mm -hmm. resonance grants the Descendants new powers. It's the season growth inversion reinforcement. Inversion reinforcement is a new growth system that resets at the start of each season. It includes five types, hunting, attributes, recovery, survival, and seasons. Okay. Through the inversion reinforcement, Descendants gain beneficial effects for progressing through seasonal content and can also obtain effects that compensate for their weakness. Each season, we plan to tailor and replace the inversion reinforcement effects, providing effects that perfectly fit the seasonal content. Oh, in ultimate trainer. A, descendant, a new ultimate descendant will be introduced in Good season Lord. one. Ultimate Freyna, who has evolved RK's toxicity into a more powerful weapon, will make her debut. In season one, you can discover Freyna's exclusive story and uncover the oh tale they are doing exclusive skill. stories for each descendant nice excava is an assault rifle with powerful versatility it okay. can be obtained through the battle pass and is also available as a free reward excava charges voltage when attacking enemies and has a unique effect of firing the charge voltage as an energy grenade oh snap this is fire weapon that combines the inherent versatility of an assault rifle with a powerful shot Frost Watcher is a scout rifle that can be farmed through the Season 1 content. When hitting enemies from long range, it reduces chill resistance and enhances the damage of one's chill skills. 
making it a perfect fit for Viesa and Haley. If you prepared a new descendant, ultimate weapon, and inversion growth, it is now time to face the most powerful colossus, Deathstalker. Deathstalker oh, lurks in the darkness of the void, targeting oh, okay. the of descendants. It is stronger than any colossus encountered so far. Oh, this is going to protect be a bitch. Albion from the threat of Deathstalker, we must once again venture into the void, unravel the mysteries within the darkness, and intercept Deathstalker. Oh, it's throwing skulls out. The first Ooh, descendant Lord. first season begins on August 29th with Haley, a new descendant, Ultimate Freyna, and the new Ultimate Weapons. Mm -hmm. New episodes, dungeon content, and void intercept battles await you in Albion. This is a descendants. good season one. The first descendant, season one invasion. Play August. For free. Oh, that's wow. Okay, okay, okay. We're gonna wow, we're gonna dissect dissect everything that we saw. Right, so let's go back. We ain't gonna dissect everything we saw, but only the key things that I want to talk about. So I thought technically we were already in season one, so that's kind of funny to me when you think about it, but that makes sense. They, it was just an opening tutorial to get yourself in there. But the dungeon mission, this one, this one got me all like, damn, wait a goddamn minute. Far from over. The Colossus still threatens us, and our enemies are plotting new strategies. Can okay. Ellis ever find true peace? Probably Has not. Really given up on the war? Probably. So Invasion is episode one. Disappeared. The Volgus began moving from deep within the dungeon to raid the ancestors' facilities in Ingress and re So, when they say a single player dungeon, that's going to be quite interesting because this whole game has been nothing but multiplayer, but you can go into certain areas as a single person. That's why you can make the certain areas private or public. This one is actually going to be pretty cool because it makes me think about how each, like, it has three different modes. Let me hear it again. Reclaim the outpost. Detecting this, Ingress immediately dispatched a scout. That scout's name oh, yes. is Haley. We got first look at Haley Scout. Haley Scott. I don't know why I said scout. Forget about it. That's the new descendant. Another ice character. I'll put that in slow motion. Which is not too bad. Not too bad at all. Not too bad. Look at her. Pretty badass. Jesus Christ. Honestly, I'm actually quite surprised that we get another ice character, but technically speaking, there's only one ice character. So they kind of balanced it out. But I hope, I'm hoping they make a female tank character in the future. Because, I mean, come on now. Why, why can't we have a female tank? Like, real talk. Some good female tanks that could be out here. Her freezing her gun like this. Chef's Kiss. That's actually pretty dope. And it looks like she has a railgun system. That's freaking nuts. That right there is nuts. What is that? Freeze armor that's on her body? It's actually pretty cool if that's true. But I see she also got another gadget. Not just a shoulder-mounted weapon right there. That's pretty slick. I can't wait to try her out. She's probably going to be my go-to versus Viesa, which I already have a lot too. But yeah, she... She definitely got a ice stun effect, which is definitely cool. But I would hope that her sniper rifle... Well, I mean, she's going to be using another weapon, so I'm not even worried about that. Her sniper rifle is like her main, like, skill weapon, just like how um, Freyna has the poison rifle as well. That's pretty cool. Damn, that does damage. If you level her up properly, her build is going to be sick. That's for sure. No doubt. No doubt. But, mm. Now we're going into Invasion Dungeon, which, as we can see, we're going to have different infiltration operations, which is pretty cool. My God, and they're going to be random, which I definitely like, as they said. So here we go. Mission Invasion, the Forgotten Tents. The Legion of Immortality is using energy weapons created using Ancestors technology to capture strategic points made by refining Inversion Energy. This weapon isolates the phase of the target it comes into contact with from the outside world, rendering them incapable of exerting any influence. But maintaining that effect requires a computing unit stacked with bogus artificial brains to be connected at all times. 
pockets. A chink in the mirror has been exposed. Huh. Time remaining 3 minutes and 51 seconds. So, okay, invasion forgot infiltration, operation hard, infiltrate the enemy's strategic point and complete the mission. Disrupt invasion. Stop the invasion of the Vogus legions armed with ancestors. What? Oh, damn. So they kind of, they're going to be evil versions of us, it seems like. That's quite interesting. It's going to be evil versions of us. Sounds like, it definitely sounds like what happened in Destiny when they had some of the uh, enemies being able to use our abilities. Players can choose to enter between the existing operations. The existing operations or the invasions invasion dungeons are only available for solo play now that was quite interesting to hear about that because also later on the announcer says that it's also for speed running so you get through the dungeons faster so i can see the challenge in that too so that means it's going to be crucial for you to make the best descendant that you can make check out what kind of bills you're going to get through to get you through that dungeon as fast as possible but it's also going to be cool. Impervious to physical attacks, the resonant shatterers cause massive explosions with the energies of RK and the Iron Heart. The Keeper Tile encryption device maintains a powerful security system. Invasion dungeons present new mechanics that disrupt the. So we're going to have to figure out how to disrupt each area. So is it going to be three areas to get through, or I saw three keys? That's going to be quite interesting. I like that. I like that. Season growth. After coming in contact with the Iron Heart, of course, the descendants experience an RK resonance phenomenon. Of course, this resonance grants the descendants new powers. Yeah, it's of course. Season growth inversion reinforcement. Inversion reinforcement is a new growth system. That I'm already past um rank 15. I'm already in 16, about to go into 17. So I hope we get rewarded for that. But now we got the season that resets at the start of each season. Which is cool. They implementing that reset, so it's kind of going to drive players to really get in, get out, and you know try to get as much as possible for the season resets. And as they said, hunt attribute recovery, survival, and season. That resets at the start of each season. It includes five types: hunting. So, shield particle augmentation. When defeating the an enemy, grants shield particle augmentation. Shield particle augmentation, max shield, plus four, plus 0.4 percent, and defense minus 0.7 percent for 10 seconds up to 50 stacks. You get to unlock certain abilities. Oh. Attributes, recovery, survival, and seasons. Through the inversion reinforcement, descendants gain beneficial effects for progressing through seasonal content. Oh. It's gonna be okay okay i'm okay with that i mean honestly this is going to drive the challenge even better but and can also obtain effects that compensate for their weakness Each... see i like that part because there's a lot of descendants that have certain weaknesses like for example bunny is squishy we all know that valley technically can be squishy but she mostly moves around enough that she shouldn't even be getting hit but there are certain characters that are not tanky at all but he's one of them so I wonder if they're going to give her a buff in her defense. I mean, you can make her a bit tanky if you put certain modules on, like Spear and Shield, like that, to boost up her um, defense pretty high. I'm an Ajax main, so that's what I mostly do for my thing. Yeah. Each season, we plan to take Anna, who has evolved RK's toxic like, descendant. All right, so this one I'm actually happy about because this is what I was asking in my last review because... When you play the first area of the first ascendant, Bunny had her own special storyline. And it ended with a nice cinematic. It was her birthday and all stuff. Everybody celebrated. Now we're doing Freyna now, which is interesting. So I'm hoping maybe each season or in between the seasons, hopefully get two or three special stories with each descendant or each season is another special story. And now we're going to get Freyna because Ultimate Freyna is out. Addition to a new descendant. A new ultimate descendant will be introduced in season one. Ultimate Freyna, who has evolved. Now, here's my question. I wonder if they're going to do ultimates each season. Because we got Valby in the last one, which doesn't really count as a season. I guess preseason. I'm going to say preseason. We got Valby, Ultimate Valby. No. Yeah, 
Twin Valley. And then we got Luna. But in the storyline, it's going to be very interesting. In season one, you can discover Freyna's exclusive story. Yeah, blood on her hands. What's that going to be about? Oh my god, that's going to be crazy. I'm actually interested in that. But I'm hoping they do more of, like I said, all the other descendants. And now we got the new ultimate weapons. Powerful versus I mean, It can be obtained through the battle pass and is also available as a I skipped ahead too much. With powerful versatility. Yeah. Excava. Excava. Frost Watcher. Is an assault rifle with powerful versatility. That looks dope, though. It can be obtained through That's the gonna be powerful. That's gonna be beefy. That's gonna be a beefy boy. But also depends on how you build it. When attacking enemies, and has a unique effect of firing the charge voltage as an energy grenade. Okay. Now, the game is a grind. So when you get a certain weapon, the ideal thing to do before you go after any type of ultimate character is to build up your weapon, make it stronger. I have a level two Thunder Cage. I have a fully leveled up grenade launcher ultimate, and I'm working on some others. But right now, I'm trying to re-roll each of my weapons to make them powerful to get the module powerful up, so I can, you know, make it stronger. And that's the whole idea. You want those maxed out modules to make your guns better. And with ultimate weapons, you can readjust. What's the word? Pretty much, you can meld another ultimate weapon into it to make it much better because they have four cube slots to make it stronger and they have special environmental effect like the thunder cage is a thunder weapon that causes aoe with the thunder attack at certain critical points it causes a big shock it reminds me of the bow in destiny 2 where it shoots one to three arrows and causes maximum damage and change the electricity to hit each other pretty cool i don't like that but honestly i'm very excited gamescom this week was pretty dope resistance I'm about to get on First Ascendant in a few minutes to stream, but because right now I'm this close. I'm like this freaking close to unlocking Ultimate Ajax. Crazy. But this whole showcase, I love these updates. The developers are doing a great job with these updates. Honestly, there you have it. I mean, the First Ascendant actually has been updating pretty well. There's been some hiccups, but not too bad. It's been a fun experience. I'm hitting that. I'm over 200 hours right now in the game. And I know there's more, many other people that's already way past that because people have been putting work in the first ascendant. And I'm hoping they keep that same energy for years to come because this game is freaking dope. Freaking fire. I'm finally in, I'm in the hard mode area, so I'm trying to level up myself so I can help out some others, which is my main goal with the first ascendant to be a support character. I want to help other people get through it because honestly, normal mode was a bitch. Like, real talk. Hard mode, not so much really, because now I know what to expect. But normal mode was really the hard mode because you have to get through all those colossi. And at a certain amount of time, I swear, normal mode should not have a timer, but that's just my own personal opinion. But as of right now, I want to hear your thoughts on the new season update. Let me hear what you have to say. Please comment, like, share, hit that notification bell. But seriously, comment below and let me hear your thoughts. Let's discuss this, all right? Other than that, if you need a descendant to roll with, let me know. Shadow Kuma on PSN. I'm down. Like I said, I'm going to be playing tonight, and I'm going to be playing early tomorrow on Saturday. So stay tuned for that. Link will be in the bottom for my, um, my Twitch channel. Other than that, as always, peace out. So remember, no surrender.